Hello, everybody. Uh, this is, of course, September. So September, we're actually, it's not 90 today. So it's starting to get decent time. Yeah. To, temperatures are cooling down. So it's starting to think of time to plant things or to what you're going to edit at the, uh, later on in the year. And so that's some of the things we're talking about and maybe some other projects that you can do in the garden with, you know. Yeah, so it's not um, it's not quite time. We've still got some. Yeah. We still have potential still for some early. really high uh, temperatures. So it's not the best time to plant. But it's not a bad time either. It's not a bad time. It's be much better than July and August, whenever it's ninety-five to hundred and we don't have any rain. So if you've got plants sitting on your front porch, you know that maybe you got at some point during the summer <laughs> and it's just too hot and you just don't want to dig the hole. Now's the perfect time to do it. Especially like we just got <laughs> rain this afternoon and yesterday afternoon. So anyways, for me, um, I, this is a great time to think about editing later on in the season. Uh, maybe not moving things necessarily right now if it's a tree or a shrub that's woody and will be going dormant, say, in November, uh, late October, November, December. That might be a little bit better time to move things, but you can be thinking about what you need to move or um, if it's not a move, but a removal, you can actually think about that now too. And actually you can re go ahead and get rid of that plant. But right here where we're standing, we're uh, just on the edge of the, the Japan or the Asian Valley, I should say, not the Japanese garden, but the Asian Valley. And we have some plants right here, which I think I'm going to be going to edit here later on, uh, in, later in the season, maybe move a couple of them. I don't know if you can see this, but there is a big mass of spirea here. This was a spirea that we received. It, it still only has a number, a letter and a number for its name. It's a trial plant we received. We didn't know what it was gonna do. Uh, my hope probably would, would be about two feet tall. It's more than a three, in, in, to three and a half, maybe four feet tall. And we actually have three of them here and you can barely see some of its neighbors. Uh, so th this is a time that um, I can think about, oh, if I take out, say, one, two, and leave the middle one, um, I'm going to open up some space. I'm going to be able to see this Hadikium back here. Uh, there's an Azalea, uh, old, I mean, that is a Rhododendron Old Hamii. It's one of the repeat, it's the parent of the repeat flowering Azaleas uh, back here. And there's actually a, a type of blueberry from Asia over here, uh, a species of Vaccinium. And you can barely see them because this Spirea grew just a tiny bit more than we expected. And that happens um, so even in your own garden. I heard that plants don't read their labels. Exactly, that's what I was gonna say. They, <laughs> they don't necessarily do what they're supposed to. Sometimes they outright die. Other times they grow slightly bigger than what you might expect. And um, sometimes these things are trialed in places that uh, aren't here in the Southeast and plants react a whole lot different here than they say do in the um, Northeast or in the Pacific Northwest, or especially the Southwest where it's a whole lot drier, the soils are a little bit different. Um, that has a, a big effect on how things are gonna react. And uh, the information that comes out on them sometimes comes from Europe, which totally different climate there. And um, our plants, again, don't read what their book suggests they should do. And like I said, this spirea did not have any suggestions to come with it. So we were flying, um, uh, we were just, we had no clue on this one. And it has surprised me and it's gotten way bigger. We planted these in gallons and like I said, they're now. When did um, you plant them, do you remember? Um, I think about four years ago. So um, they've gotten way bigger than I expected. So these are probably gonna be some edits. So those edits bring on some other things that we can do then. Uh, whether if it's, like I said, if it's an outright removal, don't worry about it, you can do that edit now. But if it's something you wanna relocate, I, I would probably wait to do the relocation until it's a little bit, uh, the plants start to go dormant, uh, especially, like I said, the spirea, it's a deciduous plant. So it's gonna start going to sleep in November and December here. So that's a perfect time to move it uh, if I wanted to do that. But then I'm gonna have some holes. So. What do people do in the fall here, or in the winter here? What do we, what do we plant? Um, pansies? We could do that, do but this pansies? is an Asian valley and I don't want that. But actually, I don't want any of these. Either. But in your general, bulbs. Bulbs. <laughs> so uh, now's a great time to be thinking yeah. about ordering your bulbs. So yeah. a lot of times bulbs sell out. And yeah. if you do any of the annual bulbs, like tulips that need pre-chilling, yeah. um, those need a 12 week chill period ish for the most yeah. part. And um, so you'll need to get those orders in because preferably, 
it's easy to just have the bulb companies pre-chill them if that's something you want to do. They're a little more and expensive, but for tulips, that's a really big thing here yeah. because they, they don't always flower well for us as, as yeah. it is, but if you can get them pre-chilled, you can actually get the display as long as you don't get squirrels or the deer come through. But yeah. I like daffodils. Yeah. You plant them in January, or as late as January, and they're fine and dandy for us for the most part. And uh, yep. we did nothing eats them. And they come but, back. Yes, and they come back as long yeah. as they get adequate sun. But anyways, yeah. but those are things you can look at. Start looking in your catalogs. We don't have any with us right now. We've uh, we, everything's online now. Yeah. And one of our favorites, so and some good friends of the arboretum are Brent and Becky Heath uh, at Brent and Becky Bulbs, and they supply us most years with a boatload of really cool bulbs and. Um, we, uh, they just, they give us a menagerie. So, um, and a lot of them are, are daffodils, but, or, or narcissus. Um, but other things that are really easy going to think about and galanthus, the snowdrops, and those truly sell out early. Yep. Uh, and get those planted as soon as you can. But there's some really cool snowdrops and they will flower very early. We have uh, some in the garden that actually start flowering in late October, early November. And we'll have flowers on uh, snowdrops into March. Um, Narcissus, again, same way. You can have Narcissus from, if you plant the right ones, from um, uh, basically, theoretically, October, probably, to May. Yeah, here. if you watch. So if you, if you get the right ones. Yeah, it's important to watch on the, a lot of them will have uh, bloom seasons. So yes. a lot of them will be labeled like, what is it, early, and late, mid, late and, and, then and mid? Or mid, or mid and late, yeah. yeah. But there are certain species that flower in the fall that don't have really a chill requirement. And uh, then there's other ones that flower super late, like uh, uh, the poeticus types, which those go right into May. Um, so uh, it, if you plan, and that's what you can be doing right now, get your catalogs out on, on th those few hot days we have right now, left now, uh, or that, Free brainstorm that just popped up. Um, it wasn't showing on the radar here, but it happened. Um, it, you get your catalog out and start shopping, uh, and do it soon because those those uh, the, the earlier bulbs like colchicums as well, and um, the snowdrops, fall crocus, so true crocus that flower in the fall, sternbergia. You want to get th those probably. <laughs> In the last week you should have ordered them, or yeah. actually a month ago you should have ordered those. But if you want to try those, I would get your orders in ASAP. They may still have some. So, so. Definitely. But other things that you can uh, do. Other um, things um, uh, on a day, maybe on a day where it is really nice out and you want to get outside. Um, a good thing to work on is you can always deadhead. Um, we've got some dahlias here that are spent uh, and just, we always say deadheading and I don't feel like, like you just say deadheading, like, oh yeah, uh, you deadhead. That's how you, that's what you do. Um, but a lot of people, sometimes people don't know what that means. Yeah. It's taking off <laughs> um, of spent flowers. And... Taking off a spent flower. And, and sometimes there are flowers that you might want to leave that are mm -hmm. in, um, attract birds or pollinators or, um, are pretty architecture for the winter. So like your grasses and stuff. You know, they're going to turn brown, but that texture is really pretty if you... Dahlias, on the other hand, don't. Dahlias, but if you, it, for us, not great. We, we get dahlias starting in late May, which, um, and they'll take, they'll go into July, and then they have a vacation period of a couple of weeks into August, early August, and they start reflowering for us here. We're really blessed with that. And then they'll often flower right to hard frost. And so if you keep them deadheaded. Yep. Uh, and that's a key thing. I just came from the Pacific Northwest uh, almost a month ago now, and I had to laugh. They uh, in Washington, they they don't start flowering until later. There, most of them are hardy along the coast near Seattle and up along uh, there. But they don't have to dig them like we don't either here. But I had to laugh. We were talking to a guy, and he says, "Yeah, we cut them all back down to the ground at the end of September, and it's like, and mulch them in. It's like." Were they still flowering? Yeah. It's like, we just let them go to frost here. <laughs> Don't do anything to them. So, um, but anyways, we can keep them flowering great here just by giving them a periodic deadhead. Yep, do you want to, are deadhead. you going to show? Yeah. So first make sure on dahlias, they can be a little bit tricky. Um, so make sure you're not cutting off your newer buds. Um, but you can tell they kind of, they kind of start to brown. And yeah. I think, uh, 
When I was an intern, you always used to say they look like snot rags. Yes, that is the double flowered ones, often hold their <laughs> flower petals. The single ones, which is mostly what we grow here in this border, typically drop their, uh, the, spent, the petals off the spent flowers. So they don't look bad. And that's what I do like about them. But they, the, the seed pods are there. Yeah, so this is a spent flower. And there's one little flower here at the, yeah. there's one little bud, but um, yeah. we're Who not, cares? We'll, we'll take it, it's fine. So just cut it back to a node. So you're not leaving that dead material. This, I don't... Yeah, someone's already just popped the top off. Probably just someone walking by. Yeah, yeah if you cut it back to a nose, you can even take a few buds off. It's not going to matter. Um, and it'll look fresh. And then you'll encourage new uh, side shoots uh, that'll flower later on. Yeah, so... so and it'll also keep how... them compact, too. They tend to flop mm -hmm. a little. Yeah, so depending on how harsh you want to be, how far you want to go back. I've been watching the bees eat these as, or, you know, come and eat. So I really hate taking them back all the way, yeah. but... You know but these are going to really we'll enjoy our fall or these cooler nights that we're hopefully we're going to be having uh, <laughs> in the next few weeks so you can go back i mean that's a little bit harsh but like tim said it's going to flush it's back gonna flush, yeah. you're going to get another round of flowers i think it's worth it to take the couple of flowers off and then you could take them inside it'll last a day or two yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um another thing that um we were gonna talk about is deadheading to control seeding. Yeah. So um, you can see these lilies. Have Actually, my dahlias are that one you were working on. It's a seedling that I've flowered <laughs> to come in here. I used to have more. But, uh, um, <laughs> these Lilium formus formosanum. formosanum. Yeah. You can see there, I don't know if these are all the same, but those are all Lilium formosanum. Yep, yeah. they're all along the border here. And you could leave those for the seed pod if you really wanted to, but you can also take them back I'm lilies. I tend to go back. I would. I mean, those. That's. It depends how tall it is and ugly it is. But I would take it no more than a third. So leave two thirds so that it can re, um, build the bulb. But. Um, but then the. Um, but then you won't risk getting those seeds. And and Lilium formosanum is one that will reseed all over the place. And they always want to come up six inches or even two inches from the edge of the border, not six feet back in where they'd be much more appropriate. But uh, they are pretty when they, they flower. They don't and I put them... read their labels. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we had earlier, you know, we were talking about editing the garden and making those holes. And so what do we, what did um, Blake say we have coming up starting tomorrow? Uh, plant sale. Yeah. Uh, so we have a few plants, you know, that, that we collected. I just collected some. That, uh, uh, Sophia is the one who's been the... Tim uh, went the, rogue the, in the nursery. Yeah, and I stole the... some just to, to show uh, here. And these are some great plants for us here. Um, I got a collection of things that actually do really well in a part shade uh, uh, garden here. And some of these are pretty darn special as far as I'm concerned. Um, move these out here. And this is? That one oh, is. I didn't know this really cultivar, cool. but anyways, I yep. know that species. So anyways, these are some of the plants here that I just quickly picked up. Um, so I have a part shade garden I've constructed here more or less or can construct from these plants. But this could be some of the stuff to put into your filler and those, those holes you've made and those edits you made. Get your plants and um, you're thinking about what, what can I plant? Well, there's some. This is a really cool one. And it's a new cultivar for me. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, this is Adiantum hispidum, which uh, is a subtropical species of Adiantum, but we found these are actually hardy for us here. And this is one I hadn't heard of. Uh, rosy, oh, it was just mo rosy maiden hair. Uh, so that makes sense. But the new growth on this, I don't know if it shows up, but it is a little bit pink on this, this species. Um, I know Tony Avon uh, from Plant Delights Nursery, Juniper Level Botanic Garden, several years ago, he actually collected a selection on Mount Haleakala in um, um, Hawaii. And that's one that's been actually hardy here in this area really well. So this is one I'm um, interested to try this one and see how that does. Uh, but uh, it's a different selection now. Um, so a couple weeks ago, uh, uh, let's see, it's almost it three weeks? Yeah, it'll be three weeks ago today. Um, I talked to you guys about Jesneriads, um, hardy Jesneriads. And this is one, did I get the label? Because I can never spit this one out entirely without some help. Uh, okay, so this is Hemoboea, which it's actually just coming into bud right now. This will get some uh, cream covered flowers that have speckles on it. It's a new one. So this is Hemoboea subacolis, variety Jangziens. I believe, and it's Jang Z Bells is the cultivar that they put on it. This is something that Mark and an, another fellow uh, in, I believe, at the Atlanta Botanic Garden collected about 
five, four or five years ago, and they found this is a really good selection of this species, and, but it's a late, uh, late season grower, really cool jesnery ad to try in your garden in half shade. Um, and it, it, it runs, uh, but not excessively, so it has runners coming up here. But these are hardy for us, uh, really cool jesnery ad. And Sophia, did you want me to show them? It's, it probably won't work. Did you want to do it? I can. She's gonna. So the buds on these, are, or the inflorescence is held in these little capsules. And uh, uh, she wanted to show them uh, this. I mean, so, who doesn't want to yeah, know? Yeah, they're really, yeah. She wanted to use this as a squirt gun. the capsules explode. So, yes, yeah, so you can use them as a squirt gun. Uh, so, uh, some of my interns in 2020 <laughs> showed me this. I did not know about it. But most of the hamaboe is, you can do that way. So. Uh, another plant for the partial shade um, that you can't go wrong with is an Edgeworthy. I love Edgeworthy. Is um, you plant this now and you'll get flowers in January and February. Uh, yellow, uh, fragrant flowers, honey scented. Um, it's in the Daphne uh, family, so the Thymolaceae. Um, this is uh, winter gold and it gets about six to eight feet tall long term and about eight to 10 feet wide. Um, perfect dome if you uh, treat it right. Very easy growing, very fast growing. This is probably only a year or so old cutting. Um, and so don't worry that it's only this big now. Give it space. Don't plant too close and have to edit. <laughs> Unless you could easily though plant your hemiboea in the fern underneath it, but don't plant any shrubbery around it because it will get much wider than it is very quickly. Um, another herbaceous perennial and it uh, an evergreen is uh, one of the newer um, carex. This is Feather Falls, uh, which these are some of the, um, I think it's, I think it's carex oshimensis, but I'm not certain if that's the species on that, but, or if it's a hybrid, but these supposedly are some of the older cultivars that, you know, got about a foot or so tall. Uh, these are them on steroids, supposedly get a couple feet tall and three or four feet wide. So, I uh, haven't yet got any in the garden. I have some in the nursery I want to plant out. Um, but there's a green selection as well, but I'm really wanting, uh, uh, liking this plant. Great in containers as well for the winter. Yeah, I was about um, to say that is a great and actually, container plant. Actually, uh, if you don't have space for an Edgeworthy anywhere else, you can put it in a big container and have it for the winter. The structure is really nice and then put your Carex with it uh, and other uh, some other evergreens uh, be good as well. Um, Another plant here, I did not even look at this one. This is a camellia. So um, Lady uh, Van Sittart, I don't know anything about her, but this was just one. Camellia is a great thing to be planting uh, about this time um, of the year as well. And so was this a, let's see, this is a, this is a Japonica. So this is probably gonna flower, uh, I don't know exactly when, but uh, most of your Japonicas flower anywhere from Japan. Uh, uh, <laughs> can't spit it out. December through April, depending on the cultivar. There's some are earlier. I don't know this one specifically, but this is the time to do some research and to fill those holes again. Um, one that I'm, this is one I really like here and I need to get one in the garden somewhere. <laughs> I love evergreen magnolias. This is not our Southern magnolia. This is um, a magnolia levifolia, which we have actually, we have a couple different kinds of levifolia in the garden. I really like them. They're earlier flower, or they flower most of the time, late March, April for the main display. Um, and then cross a uh, levifolia with a foliolata, which is a tree forming one. Uh, levifolia is kind of shrubby in 10 feet tall and eight, 10 feet wide, profuse bloomer, wonderful foliage. And this is uh, crossed with Leva folia, which is a small tree, creamy white flowers. And this one is a creamy white flowers again. Um, it's in the group of magnolias that used to be uh, split out into Michelias or Michelias. And the great thing about them is that you will get on an established plant, you'll have buds, there's already buds on this, but there will be buds on this much of the branch and you'll get an inch and a half or two inch flowers uh, over uh, in, in every leaf node for maybe 10, 15 leaf nodes. Uh, so really extended display. These are some we got in the spring and uh, bare root and we potted up and Sophia has been growing out and they're looking really good. So they- I really love the texture on this. I don't the endomentum is wonderful is. on these, even when they're not in flower. Yeah. And the fragrance on the blossoms of uh, both foliolata and Levifolia are great. So I assume this one has a good fragrance as well. What's the so, variety on that one? This is Copper Talica, I believe. And uh, if I'm getting it, 
Copper Talica, yes. Yeah. Spelled so, like copper and metallica. Copper and metallica with oh, yeah. m minus the ma. <laughs> okay. Copper yeah. Talica. And yeah, you can see right there it's that so beautiful cool. indumentum, the little hairs, the golden hairs. Um, and that comes partially from both species uh, in the, of the parentage, but probably this is mostly, the leaf size on this is more closely to that of a foveolata than that of a levifolia, but anyways. So those are just a handful of plants that, like I said, if um, we're gonna have a whole bunch of things in our plant sale, I don't know how many, yeah. about 100? 78. Oh, it's only 78, okay, still. 78, that's a ton of things to choose from, that's and there's lot. some really cool stuff that, you know, from those edits that you're gonna make in your garden, mm -hmm. uh, you can stick some of these in. And do we have any questions now? Sure, there are a few questions. Uh, Candace is asking, when is a good time to divide perennials like grasses, yarrows, sedums, etc.? Okay, I'd say you can probably do, it depend, might depend on the species of grass, if, uh, if it's a warm season or cool season one, but you can do almost all of those anytime now even. I would not worry about your herbaceous perennials so much as the, like I was saying, woody plants, I would wait a, a little bit while to do those moves if you're gonna move them and dig them, but those herbaceous perennials, you're probably gonna be safe to do still right at this time of the year, no problem. Okay, so you're talking about transplanting. How about uh, dividing? D dividing, no problem. At this, okay. I would think you'd be fine, especially here in this uh, our area. They're still going to have plenty of time to reestablish. And yarrow, you can't kill it. And actually, <laughs> the more you divide it, the better it'll it'll that'll just reinvigorate it. Sedum, same way. You can probably take cuttings of the sedum. If it's an upright sedum, just stick the the uh, cut the uh, stems off, stick them in the ground. And do the same thing with the spreading herbaceous or the ground covering ones, which are. They, they're now not all sedums anymore, gonna, so we won't get into that. Say, That's a scary thought. The tall sedums are not sedums <laughs> anymore. Nor half the, <laughs> or the spready ones are not sedums anymore either. But, and let's see, what else did she say? Um, I uh, will say on the grasses, the grass, if, yeah. it, it's important to know if they're warm or cool season. Yeah. Because if we do have a wet winter, the warm season grasses, doing it later in the year, yeah. um, they will rot. Yeah. So it's important to know when they're going to be actively growing. And they tend to be super... Um, Again, depending on the species, they tend to be super vigorous. So yes. you have no problem doing that yeah. after we get past that really yeah. wet the Panicums, like say, uh, the, uh, those for me, I would wait until late winter. I found they're the easiest to move whenever they're totally dormant. <laughs> the roots on an established one, for instance, will, um, well, when they're actively growing, they won't release from the ground, but it, you can actually get them out when they're dormant. Yeah. Uh, and that's a warm season grass. Well, and that's but, another, uh, that's another so. good point is that um, a lot of the grasses- They look nice. Them. They look really right. nice and you want them for that winter structure. Yeah. And also they can be, some of the foliage can be really rough. So transplanting them at yeah. a time you know, once you're ready to cut them yeah, back. It, it's a perfect time to do it is when they're already down. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Yeah, um, somebody's asking about a peony that's only two to three years old. Okay. They want to move it. Is there anything special for that? Or? Now is actually an excellent time to move peonies if you're going to have to do it. And it's better to do it when it's younger than to wait because they hate to reestablish. So if you've only had it in the ground for two to three years, and you, uh, it'll be it'll quickly reestablish probably. So yeah, now's perfect time. It's great time to buy peonies. Again, much mm -hmm. like your bulbs. Perfect time if you can uh, want to order peonies. Now is a perfect time to get them in the ground. And and order. I don't know if there is. Yeah, if you can they, get them, they can be hard to the, they can be hard to find. And yes. so you may have to order them and, and wait. They, they sell them in the late spring or the late winter, early spring as well. But it, now is a wonderful time because they will root right in. They want a cold winter, and so they are not going to be phased at all. If if we by some freak chance have a bad winter, <laughs> they they actually enjoy that more than our mild winters. Nice. Uh, Show us the bulbs you have. Oh, no. That, we were just, that was more of a reference just for me to remember to talk about bulbs. But those are just some <laughs> narcissists but, uh, that we have sitting here. But. Okay. Uh, Carolyn Leith is asking, well, she says, I have ideas that are sending out runners. Should yep. I cut them off and try to root them? You can uh, maybe actually divide it if, they're, if they've actually rooted in. Yeah. Uh, might be an easier way than to try to root them at this time of the year. Uh, just actually throw some mulch over top of them and they'll probably root down. They're naturally a colony forming species of plants. So they kind of arch over, they runner and keep on moving. They aren't one to naturally stay in one location. Um, and they'll also be in areas that get periodic fire too. So they regenerate fairly quickly. So 
Nice. And you did mention mulching. Sandy Morgan's asking, is fall a good time to mulch and fertilize plants? And then again in spring. Definitely a great time to mulch. Uh, might depend on what it is if you want yeah. to fertilize it or not. Um, you, I don't know. I'm terrible on the fertilizer part. We don't do much fertilizing here at the Arboretum. We rely on organic mulch uh, for most of what we do. So. Yeah, and I would say um, I tend to like to put mulch down in the winter if you have the yeah, choice. If you have put the it choice. Down, if you have the choice, put it down in the winter. You know, that mulch isn't going to... Again, when you're doing those edits, taking things out, there's yep. a big open spot. It's easy to get it in there. It's easy and, to get it in. Uh, it's and... cooler for myself and the volunteers to throw it out during the winter months. Yeah. As Lise, who's behind our camera, can tell you, uh, <laughs> as she was helping us mulch yesterday. So, <laughs> and last week. <laughs> but, but if you think about the, the winter, um, you know, when everything's down or the late fall, yeah. when everything is, you know, been hit by the frost and not looking great, yeah. you can go in and fill out with mulch. And it'll keep, I mean, any time of the year, it'll keep down the weeds in an open spot. Yep. But don't, I was driving down the road on Saturday, or no, on Monday to a friend's house in Southern Wake County, and I saw a guy mulching a crepe myrtle, or a row of crepe myrtles, and I've seen them other times. He literally has a uh, mound about this wide and about this tall <laughs> around each crepe myrtle, and it's like I wanted to stop and say, no. No, don't do a volcano. Don't Pull that all away. Put it three feet out from them and not touch them. Don't, on your woody plant material, do not mulch uh, much touching the trunks. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, uh, you're more liable to bring in some insect and disease in there. So, uh, and also forming ad adventitious roots that you don't necessarily want that could girdle, say, a single trunk um, uh, tree. But yeah, as long as you're doing safe mulching three to uh, four inches out away from the plants, uh, it's great. Nice. Okay, Jill Morrow is asking, I have young trees just now, two years old. When should I move them? Uh, what kind of trees are they? That's, that's a good question. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, if, if it's a true tree, I would probably, if in the one to two year range, if she needs to move them, I would probably wait again until they're dormant. Um, crab apples. If it's a crab apple, yeah, find a dandy time to do them dormant. Uh, I would wait probably to uh, either late November into um, December or then into uh, February, March, early March at the latest as a really good time. Late January too. Depends where she's at too. So, um, Okay. Um, when they're totally dormant, it's really easy to move those. So. Sure. Uh, Carolyn's asking, do you divide Father Gillis now? Father Gillis, um, they again sucker. You could, I mean, you could probably do that, uh, but I would maybe wait a little bit again until they're uh, more or less dormant. Uh, again, do your planning now. Uh, plan for November to do your dividing there, so. Awesome, okay, and uh, here's an interesting one. How do you mulch the very low growing ground covers like sedum without burying them? You don't necessarily mulch them. They act as your mulch. Mm. We they don't need an organic, out. they don't like excess organic matter. So I, yeah. I, you can mulch up to the edges of them, but I would not mulch them themselves. Okay. Okay. Uh, Diane Schaefer's asking, do ground up pine cones make a good mulch? Should I add in some lime? I mean, check your soil pH, uh, uh, whether you need the lime or not. But I would think the squirrel shredding your pine cones would be perfectly uh, acceptable as a pine bark mulch, or like, just like a pine bark mulch. Run over them with the lawnmower. Yeah. Or you see them piles of where the squirrels have shredded them. <laughs> uh, and that might be what uh, Diane has. I know Diane, so. Okay. Okay, Candace is saying, why are the tall sedums no longer sedums? Don't ask me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a taxonomist. Because someone said so. They've go. split up the genus sedum a whole lot. Let's just put it that way. Absolutely. <laughs> We're here for horticulture, not taxonomy. Okay. We can have, we should have Dennis come right. in. Yes, Dennis needs to talk about, that's a perfect thing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> On an upcoming midweek, Dennis will be talking about taxonomy. <laughs> okay, and I believe this will be our last question for this segment. Uh, this is from Valerie Lorenz. Is now a good time to move Ogon Nohana? What is Ogon? I know that- uh, Ogon is a- I know that I it's gold, something gold. Is it's, it a Japanese it's name? It's gold flower is the literal translation from Japanese. I need to know what genus. No kidding. Oh, God. hold on. That's a cultivar. It's a gardenia. A gardenia. A gardenia. Okay. A golden flowered gardenia. Okay, so that might be a little bit on the touchy side. Um, 
a gardenia. So, I mean, you could probably still move that right now and let it get established. Most, as long as it's a, a fully hardy one, an Augusta, we're probably okay. If, but if we would happen to have a really cold spell coming, she might want to just protect it just because that's a really special one. So, okay. um, well, great. Thank you so much, Tim and Sophia. That is about all the time we have for our September gardening task midweek. Uh, I'd like to ask everybody at home who's joining us to please join us next week for uh, our midweek with Tim, where Tim's going to go through his vacation to New Mexico. A little bit, a, f a few parts of it, and show you some plants that we can grow here and see pictures of them at where they're growing in the wild, which is bizarre seeing some of them in the wild so, yeah. to me. So that should be a lot of fun. So make sure you're here next week at three for that. And we'll see you all then. Take care. Thanks.